Hello, I'm Julia Donaldson and thanks for joining me for another story. I wonder what you've all been doing all these weeks at home. I've been doing a lot of reading, so I thought I'd choose a story this week which is about books and reading. It's also about a very clever dog and it's called The Detective Dog. There once was a dog with a keen sense of smell. She was known far and wide as Detective Dog Nell. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Time after time, Nell, the detective, solved crime after crime. Who threw the hazelnuts down from the trees? Who took the honey away from the bees? Who did the poo on the new gravel path? How did the spider get into the bath? Sniff, sniff, sniff. With a wag of her tail, Nell, the detective, was hot on the trail. Nell shared her house with a person called Peter, a very nice child, though he could have been neater. And six-year-old Peter was one of those boys who kept on mislaying his clothes and his toys. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Nose to the ground, these are the things the detective dog found. The bus in the bowl and the book in the bed. The sock in the sofa the shoe in the shed, the tumble-down teddy, the bounce-away ball, Nell the detective discovered them all. Now, Nell did detection from Tuesday till Sunday, but did something totally different on each Monday. She found Peter's bag and she tracked down her lead, then set off for school where she heard children read. The children loved reading their stories to Nell, and Nell loved to listen, and also to smell. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Mixed in the air were plasticine, custard, and newly washed hair, the crusts in the bins, and the coats on the hooks. But the best smell of all was the smell of the books. Books about dinosaurs, books about knights, books about planets and meteorites, books about princes who turned into frogs, books about dragons and books about dogs. But then came a Monday when all was not well. Nell sniffed the air and she smelt the wrong smell. Into the classroom, the two of them hurried and found Mr. Jones looking terribly worried. He tugged at his hair and he let out his sigh. Peter looked round and he started to cry. Sniff, sniff, sniff. What was going on? The books, cried out Peter. The books have all gone. Nell gave a growl when she heard the bad news, but then started sniffing and searching for clues. Sniff, sniff, sniff. On the bookshelf, a cap. The thief must have dropped it, that terrible chap. Nell sniffed the cap, then she tugged on the lead and woof, she was off at astonishing speed. Everyone followed Detective Dog Nell. She stopped at the traffic lights. What could she smell? Sniff, sniff, sniff. Haddock and hay, pizza and penguins, and further away, the smell of the thief. And how very exciting. Thousands of pages all covered in writing. Then woof, they were off with no time for a stop. Past the farm and the zoo and the takeaway shop. They raced through a field where the rabbit smelt food, then over a golf course and into a wood. They thrashed through the undergrowth, leafy and dense, till they came to a gate in an old wooden fence. Then Nell started growling and pricked up an ear. She barked, and the bark meant, The thief is in here! They flung the gate open, and Peter cried, Look! For there sat a man with his nose in a book. There were many more books poking out of a sack, and the children yelled, those are our books, give them back. Sniff, sniff, sniff. The book thief looked sad. I'm sorry, 
he sniffles. I know I've been bad. Stealing is wrong. But I, I just meant to borrow. I was planning to give all the books back tomorrow. To borrow? To borrow? Nell pricked up an ear. She barked and the bark meant, I've had an idea. Then woof, she was off. And away they all sped, including the book thief who told them, I'm Ted. Sniff, sniff, sniff. They raced through the wood and over the field where the rabbits smelt good. They panted and puffed past the takeaway shop, the zoo and the farmyard, with never a stop except to retrieve Peter's scarf and his ball, which someone had thoughtfully placed on a wall, till they came to a building with doors open wide. And what did they see? when they all went inside. Thousands of books from the floor to the ceiling. The books gave the thief the most heavenly feeling. He gazed in amazement. Where am I? He said. And Peter replied, in the library, Ted. You can join if you want to. There isn't a fee. And then you can take lots of books out for free. So Ted has a lovely new library card and he sits reading books in his little backyard. And when it's a Monday, Detective Dognell visits the school with a wonderful smell. Sniff, sniff, sniff. With a faraway look, she smells and she listens to book after book. Books about dinosaurs, books about knights, books about planets and meteorites, books about princes who turn into frogs, books about dragons, and books about dogs, all the old books, and a new one as well. The story of daring detective dog, Nell. I really enjoyed writing that story. In fact, so much that I've written another one, which is going to be coming out in the autumn about another very clever dog and that one's going to be called the hospital dog it's about a dog who visits children in hospital to cheer them up when they're feeling poorly i was actually inspired for that story about a real life dog who visits hospitals called nala and here are some pictures of nala Nala did such a wonderful job cheering up those children in hospital that I just knew I had to write a book all about it. And I'm delighted that Sarah Ogilvy, who did the pictures for the detective dog, is going to be illustrating the new book as well. So I'm going to hand you over to Sarah and she's going to do some drawing for you now. Thanks, Julia. Hi, everyone at home. Hope you enjoyed that story. My name's Sarah and I'm the illustrator of the detective dog. And did you know that Detective Dog Nell loves books so much, she is even sniffing the one she's in. Would you like me to show you how I draw her? Okay, so first we're going to draw Detective Dog Nell's nose. And it's up in the air because she's sniffing and searching for the stolen books. Nice smiley mouth. And because Nell's concentrating, she has her eyes closed as she's taking in the scent. Nell has some very feathery ears that waft behind her as she's running. And then we're just going to take that down a little bit, a little bit more feathering and a nice colour and her little name tag swinging as she's running along. Now we have to draw a big line round her back and then a quick flick up of a curve and that is her tail. She has quite a feathery tail still and because she's happy and she's wagging her tail we put in some extra lines to give a little bit of movement go. Now the tricky bit, dog's legs. So dog's legs don't bend in the same way that our legs do. So they bend behind and back. So I'm just following that line up, joining up with the tail and then this leg's going to kick out the back and with little doggy pads like that. And then I'm just
just going to draw her tummy and then a leg that is raised as she's running. Now, when I was given this text to illustrate by Julia, I had to work out what Nell was going to look like. So I thought about different kinds of dogs and decided that she should be a kind of setter or a spaniel type dog because they're used to running and collecting things and finding things. And I guess a little sausage dog wouldn't have been quite right as it would have taken an awful long time to run round the town past the takeaway shop and the zoo and we would have been there for ages. So definitely some long legs are good. Okay, that's the general shape of now. Now, let's just put a little bit of ground in so our foot's making contact and all her other legs are in action. There we go. Now, a little bit of colour detail. So, let's add a patch on her back. A little bit of colour over her ear. A little bit more detail, these little flicks around her ear there. Now it's quite nice to mix your media up, so I sometimes use a little bit of ink as well. So I'm just going to quickly dip my brush in there and get a nice rich orangey colour. And you can add in some little dots and patches. I like to put mine around Nell's legs. And spaniels and setters are really nice markings, so you can add in some spots into your drawing and also maybe some on the nose too, and then maybe some on the tail. When the brush gets dry, the brush strokes can make your tail look very waggy, like that. Okay, so she's running along on the belly. And just quickly adding a little bit of colour on her collar and of course her leash is flying in the wind and I don't know where Peter is, maybe he couldn't keep up so she's kind of left him behind and rushed away. And lastly, we want something that she is smelling. Now it's very difficult to draw a smell because you can't see a smell. So just think about maybe an aroma or maybe it's like a bit of a mist or steam if you like. And this is the smell of the books that she's following. There we go. And just for some fun because there are a couple of favourite characters of mine. Let's add some slightly curious penguins. I like the penguins. They're kind of interesting little characters who sneak from the zoo and pop off to the takeaway shop to get a little bit of pizza. And of course their favourite topping on the pizza is anchovy. Nice bit of fish pizza. And then let's just draw another little one down here. He's got his little tufts, little rock hopper tufts. A bit of a tubby tummy. And there he is. And they're thinking, what's going on here? There we go. A little bit of colour. And do a little bit of ground them to be standing on and that's how you draw detective dog now thanks so much sarah well next week the story isn't about a dog it's going to be about a bear this bear he's called the everywhere bear and this is the book about him which is illustrated by rebecca cobb and rebecca's going to be doing some drawing as well see you then